Okay. Right. All right. Uh, welcome everyone. Good evening to all the students online. Today we are going to cover the topic of Indian painting under the Art and Culture series. Now, uh, painting in India has been going on for a very long period of time. Even during the prehistoric period, people used to leave paintings. Okay. What do paintings reflect? Kya hote hai paintings? Why are human beings compelled to paint? Kyo paint karte hai log? Bataye, what do you think? Aisi man mein aya to kar diya? Uh, do they paint with purpose? Painting is simply the artistic expression of human creativity it blends several things first of all human beliefs aesthetic sense and creative energy the subject matter of painting and the purpose of painting may be variable paintings may be devotional or they may be born out of a sense of wonderment they may even be used to express criticism or to satire they may even be seen as the cultural representation of values that people hold dear right now paintings in india have been present from the prehistoric period as well what do you understand by the phrase by the term prehistory no a period of the past where no written records were created because human beings did not have script in the prehistoric period what do you think was the function of paintings to relate stories to hear stories has been part and parcel of the human experience from the very beginning okay now human beings may have the ability to communicate verbally but intergenerational communication of stories and legends is possible only with the script in the absence of script who cons a medium hota hai either human memory or painting okay so prehistoric paintings emerged as a form of keeping legends alive right where would these paintings be found wherever the people used to live back then they did not have paper or even if they did have some perishable material on which paintings could be made 
those naturally haven't survived the only surviving remnants come from caves and rock shelters right these are in the form of engravings as well as rock paintings engravings kya hote hain on a surface on a rock surface or a cave wall may be using a small stone some designs have been scored onto the surface without any filling of color right rock paintings kya honge colors have been used to leave behind imprints theek hai so what do you think were the legends and stories popular among prehistoric humans naturalistic themes right their environment was uh, dominated by nature therefore nature forms a very important subject to so, isme kya kya cheeze dekhengi paintings of trees birds animals hunting scenes etc further some community scenes etc are also going to be found so jo earliest paintings hongi there what are you going to find scenes from nature or community scenes scenes from nature why because in the earliest phase human beings did not live in tribes or bands rather they usually lived alone and in their free time they used to paint whatever they saw in their surroundings right with the emergence of community life community scenes also began to emerge clear hai itna acha now prehistoric part of india how many ages can you divide it into several ages such as paleolithic age mesolithic age neolithic age calcolithic age and so on right paintings emerged for the first time during which of these phases during the paleolithic age itself early part of the paleolithic age what is it called lower paleolithic age followed by the middle paleolithic age and latest one upper paleolithic age ठीक है नाउ नो पेंटिंग्स बिलोंग टू दी लोअर और मिडिल पेलियोलिथिक एज हैव बीन फाउंड इन इंडिया एज ऑफ येट वी आर अनश्योर ऑफ वेदर ह्यूमेंस यूज टू पेंट बैक देन और नॉट ठीक है सो द अर्लीएस्ट पेंटिंग्स फाउंड इन इंडिया बिलोंग टू दी अपर पेलियोलिथिक एज क्लियर है इतना द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ पेंटिंग्स in india belong to the mesolithic period during the upper paleolithic age what were the most dominant themes animal figures birds hand prints etc theek hai during the mesolithic period hunting scenes having a single hunter or multiple hunters 
multiple hunters people had started living in well developed hunting communities tribal communities by this point of time so group hunting scenes community life for example paintings of human figures having hands linked with each other probably dancing other dancing scenes a uh, community feast where food is being prepared and consumed pictures of children jumping and playing pictures of elders pictures of women and men theek hai acha now during the mesolithic period there was a slight uh, stylistic transformation from the upper paleolithic period kya the paintings themselves became smaller in size but they became more detailed more accurate so they were smaller but more detailed theek okay? hai now there is also a very distinct stylistic dis- uh, difference visible in the way in which uh, human figures are shown and the way in which animal figures are shown animal figures कैसे हैं दे आर नेचुरलिस्टिक एंड आइडियलाइज नेचुरलिस्टिक का मतलब क्या होता है that as they appeared in nature an accurate representation has been made on stone theek hai so a great degree of attention has been given to remaining anatomically consistent whatever the animal looked like in real life a great amount of attention has been paid to ensure that uh, in the painting also it appears the same idealized ka matlab kya hota hai that uh, usually in nature you are not going to find perfect specimens right some animals are going to have some injuries some may have some illness they may be weakened or something right but yahan pe animals kis tarah se dikhaye jayenge they are in their ideal condition they all appear to be extremely healthy youthful and almost magical theek hai so what does this indicate about the religion or belief system of the mesolithic people that they used to revere animals they were nature worshippers and animals were considered to have some magical ability by them theek hai acha in contrast human figures have been treated stylistically specifically the male figures so why have human figures been treated stylistically why have they been represented in the form of stick figures and why has not the same degree of anatomic accuracy been seen in human male figures as it was in animal figures kyun hua hoga aisa no once again try to correlate it to the belief system right now they were animal worshipers right what was their most important occupation hunting and gathering of food who were involved in hunting primarily men or women men now hunting of an animal would naturally been seen as something that was sinful right therefore while animals which were revered they have been depicted accurately humans have not been depicted accurately why because they did not want to get personally associated permanently with the guilt that came from killing of animals okay 
so male figures of mesolithic period have been shown as stick figures female figures को कैसे दिखाया गया है हैविंग फुलर फॉर्म्स ठीक है सो दे आर शोन यूजली हैविंग अ प्रॉपर बॉडी इज दिस क्लियर इंपॉर्टेंट साइट्स वेयर पेलियो सॉरी प्री हिस्टोरिक पेंटिंग्स हैव बीन फाउंड कहां कहां पे भीमबेट का लखुदियार एंड सेवरल अदर साइट्स अक्रॉस सेंट्रल एंड सदर्न इंडिया ठीक है तो दीज आर दी इंपॉर्टेंट डिटेल्स टू रिमेंबर अबाउट प्री हिस्टोरिक पेंटिंग्स नाउ what was the color scheme the most prominently used colors kon kon se hain red white black yellow and green where were the colors obtained from from locally available minerals red coming from red soil a compound known as hematite ferric oxide white coming from lime chalk right calcium carbonate black coming from soot right so when you burn an uh, unclean fire in an enclosed environment usually at the top you are going to find deposits of soot that is unburnt black carbon so usko use karte the and yellow and green were hydrated and dehydrated forms of crushed rock known as चालसेडनी ठीक है सो so, यहां से कलर्स ऑप्टेन होते थे नाउ सम ऑफ द डिटेल्स अबाउट प्री हिस्टोरिक पेंटिंग्स इन इंडिया अर्लीस्ट पेंटिंग्स हैव बीन रिपोर्टेड फ्रॉम द अपर पेलियोलिथिक टाइम्स राइट अपर पेलियोलिथिक पेंटिंग्स के कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स क्या हैं? दैट जनरली कलर्स यूज वर ग्रीन एंड डार्क रेड ह्यूज एनिमल फिगर्स वर फाउंड most often depicted animals were bison elephants tigers rhinos and boars beside stick like human figures mostly they were filled with geometric patterns in the mesolithic period what were the important details largest number of paintings from this period were the themes are more diverse but paintings are smaller in size hunting scenes dominate people are seen hunting in groups armed with barbed spears pointed sticks arrows and bows mesolithic artists loved to paint animals now one important thing to note is that in some pictures animals are also shown chasing men right so the competition between animals and humans for survival is a very important new theme which emerged during this period now animals have been painted in a naturalistic and idealized style while humans were depicted only in a stylistic manner right women are painted both in the nude and clothed the young and the old equally find paint in these paintings place in these paintings calculithic period what is going to be shown in these paintings calculithic period ki paintings mein by this point of time some settled agrarian communities were also there for example people living in the harappan civilization 
both the calculithic people and the harappan people were aware of each other and exchanged goods with each other on a frequent basis and this exchange has been captured in the paintings left behind by the calculithic communities the paintings of this period reveal the association contact and mutual exchange of the cave dwellers of these areas with settled agricultural communities many a time calculithic ceramics that is pottery and rock paintings bear common motifs example crossed hatched squares and lattices right so crossed hatched squares and lattices they are found in almost all of the paintings left behind by all of the calculithic communities what does this indicate that they must have had some kind of contact they also must have shared the same aesthetic sense which was probably linked to their belief system so a common belief system or a common basis for the belief system must have existed right pottery and metal tools are also shown in these paintings contribution of me uh, prehistoric paintings kya hai what are the important contributions of prehistoric man to paintings that first of all although they were from uh, the remote past and they were created in a period in an atmosphere of relative material uh, you can say scarcity they do not lack in imagination or quality right there is a simple simple charm to these paintings as well in these the human beings are shown as being adventurous who and they rejoice in their existence the animals are shown to be almost more youthful and majestic than they perhaps actually were once again they were idealized both the proportion and tonal effect were also realistic that means the aesthetic sense of these people was actually quite developed primitive artists seem to possess an intrinsic pattern for storytelling the animals were engaged in survival in a struggle for survival against humans and this uh, sense has been captured by these paintings these paintings also shed light about the important material details of life during the prehistoric period how the people used to live what they used to eat how they used to obtain their food what they valued culturally and what they did not ye sari cheeze humko yahan se pata lagti hain and more importantly prehistoric paintings give us a living window into the mind of the paleolithic of the prehistoric people they help us in understanding their mind the way that they thought and finally prehistoric paintings are the only reliable source to learn about the prehistoric part of indian history apart from that very scarce evidence is found right so this is the utility of prehistoric paintings now coming to the historical phase now indian painting as we have just seen iska antiquity hum pata nahi laga sakte kitna purana hai from prehistoric period itself human beings have been painting during the historic period from the first century bc onwards the evolution of classical painting emerged and uh, this classical indian art was based on the shadangas these are six principles of indian painting that have even been mentioned in uh, the kama sutra of vatsayan right what were these six elements roop bheda pramanam bhav lavanya yojanam sadrishyam and varnika bhanga रूप भेदा क्या होता है नॉलेज ऑफ अपियरेंसेस राइट दैट एन आर्टिस्ट मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ व्हाट हिज सब्जेक्ट अपियर्स टू बी लाइक राइट प्रमाणम करेक्ट करेक्ट परसेप्शन मेजर एंड स्ट्रक्चर सो दे मस्ट हैव द एबिलिटी टू गेज हाउ द रियलिटी मस्ट बी ट्रांसलेटेड ऑन टू द कैनवस भाव action of feelings on forms right so this is the emotional response that must be generated by looking at a painting lavanya yojam infusion of grace and artistic representation that means the artist should not act like a simple uh, camera he should be able to interpret whatever he sees in his own manner artistically and then represented on to the uh, canvas sadrishyam which means 
similitude that the executed painting should not be completely different from the real subject that it may be inspired by the subject but it should have some similarities and vernika bhanga artistic manner of using the brush and colors the various techniques that are used so these are the six elements that an artist must uh, strive to manifest in his paintings for giving a realistic effect right so these are the uh, shadangas the six lung, limbs of indian painting now indian paintings may be categorized into two mural art and miniature art basic uh, difference in definition kya hai between murals and miniatures murals are simply wall paintings and miniatures these are paintings which are not done on wall right they emerged as parts of book illustration then stand alone portrait uh, pictures also emerged so they are of smaller size and are not executed on walls specifically right now what is a mural a mural is any piece of artwork that is painted or applied directly onto a wall right more broadly mural art also appears on ceilings or any other large permanent surface an important characteristic of indian murals is that uh, wherever you find the murals they have been harmoniously incorporated into the uh, architectural elements of the place in which they are found for example if you are looking at a temple wall the temple wall is going to be incorporated into the painting so the painting is done in such a way that it does not appear to be distinct from the architecture on which it exists right there are many techniques used for mural paintings of which fresco is only one okay so what fresco kya hai it is one of the techniques of mural paintings a mural therefore is a general term for a wall painting while fresco is a specific term now there are several types of fresco kitne types of fresco hain three basic types of fresco paintings one is known as buon fresco right it is also called true fresco kaise kiya jata hai ye first of all it is the most common fresco method and it involves use of pigments mixed with water without a binding agent on a thin layer of wet wet fresh lime mortar or plaster so there is a wall for example temple wall hai ya cave wall hai first you apply a thin coat of wet lime plaster on it and then while the plaster is still wet you mix colors into water and then apply the colored water onto the painting so aise kya hoga as the plaster dries it absorbs all of the colored water into it right so the entire painting uh, so the color you can say gets bound to the surface naturally right isko kya bolte hain buon fresco fresco theek hai the second type is known as fresco seco or seco fresco it is also done on plaster but after the plaster has already dried theek hai so is water going to uh, adhere to such a surface nahi pani lagaoge usko upar it is simply going to drip it is not going to get absorbed therefore instead of water some other binding agent has to be used for binding the color on to the plaster इसमें बाइंडिंग एजेंट क्या यूज होता है एग टेम्पेरा दैट मीन्स अ बीटन एग ग्लू और ऑयल ठीक है दिस इज नोन एज फ्रेस्को सेको एंड थर्ड टाइप ऑफ फ्रेस्को इज मेजो फ्रेस्को इट इन्वॉल्व पेंटिंग ऑन टू एन ऑलमोस्ट बट नॉट क्वाइट ड्राई सरफेस सो दैट पिगमेंट पेनिट्रेट लाइटली इन टू द्लास्टर 
right so what is usually done is that uh, once the plaster is dried before applying the watercolor onto the surface the artist is going to spray the lime surface with water once again in order to make it damp right so the color seeps into the surface at least a half way at least partly okay this is known as mezzo fresco it is also known as tempera okay now paintings in ajanta are done in seco fresco ठीक पेंटिंग्स एट द राज राजेश्वर स्टाइल राज राजेश्वर टेम्पल कहां पे है तांजोर दे आर डन इन दी बोन फ्रेस्को स्टाइल और ट्रू फ्रेस्को वाइल पेंटिंग्स done in the rest of india mural paintings in the rest of india are in the mezzo fresco style or tempera style outside india the most commonly used type of fresco technique is buon fresco टू फ्रेस्को ठीक है इंडिया में जो आपको फ्रेस्को मिलता है दैट इज यूजली नॉट ट्रू फ्रेस्को ओनली वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ट्रू फ्रेस्को इन इंडिया राज राजेश्वर टेम्पल के म्यूरल्स नाउ कमिंग टू दी इंडियन म्यूरल्स इंडियन म्यूरल्स फॉर मेड ऑन वॉल्स ऑफ केव एंड पैलेसेज दर्लीस्ट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ म्यूरल्स आर दी ब्यूटिफुल फ्रेस्को ऑन दी वॉल्स ऑफ अजंता एलोरा बाग एंड सीता नवसल केव old manuscripts also mention the presence of such frescoes for example in the venepetak there is mention of amrapali who was she a rich courtesan of vaishali she had a huge palace and according to the venepetak she had commissioned a number of painters to draw the images of kings important merchants and traders of that region onto the walls of her palace टेक्निक क्या है द टेक्निक एंड प्रोसेस ऑफ मेकिंग इंडियन वॉल पेंटिंग्स हैज बीन डिस्कस्ड इन द विष्णु धर्मोत्तरम अ संस्कृत टेक्स्ट ऑफ द फिफ्थ सिक्स सेंचुरी सीई एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ दीज पेंटिंग्स अपीयर्स टू हैव बीन द सेम इन ऑल ऑफ द अर्ली एग्जांपल्स दैट हैव सर्वाइव्ड विद एन ओनली एक्सेप्शन इन द राज राजेश्वर टेम्पल एट तांजोर व्हिच इज सपोज्ड टू बी डन इन अ ट्रू फ्रेस्को मेथड और द बोन फ्रेस्को मेथड ठीक acha the wall was first coated with an exceedingly thin layer of lime plaster over which paintings were drawn in watercolors in the true fresco method paintings are done when the surface of the wall is still wet so that pigments go deep inside the wall surface the other method of painting which is also known as tempura or mezzo fresco was applied in india primarily it is a method of painting on the lime plastered surface which has been allowed to dry first and then drenched with fresh lime water on the surface thus obtained the artist proceeded to sketch theek hai principal colors in use were red ochre vivid red yellow ochre indigo blue lapis lazuli lamp black chalk white and uh, terra verde and green terra verde is another shade of green most of the colors were locally available brushes were made from the hair of animals such as goat camel mongoose etc theek hai to basic principle samajh mein aaya hai indian murals ka now some important examples most famous example of indian uh, wall art ajanta caves mein ajanta caves kahan par hai maharashtra how many caves 29 caves carved into a semi circular granite hill which is hemmed on one side by which river question aa chuka hai civil services mein already vaghora river caves are distributed in how many levels two levels three levels टू लेवल्स तो यहां पे टू स्टोरीड केव्स मिल जाती हैं आपको राइट 
Ajanta caves are associated with which religion? Buddhism exclusively. Can you shed light on their date when they were excavated and completed? Second century BC से इनका excavation start हो गया था and they continued to be excavated and expanded till as late as the early 8th century AD. ठीक है वाकटका period तक right now the Ajanta caves, the paintings found here can broadly be divided into two phases. First phase beginning in the 2nd century BC, second phase from the uh, 5th century to about the 8th century. Okay? Ajanta caves are the only location in India where wall paintings from the 1st century BC and 5th century AD have been found. Nowhere else in the entire country have paintings from this period been found. Okay? So, you can make a special note of this particular piece of information. Only site with paintings from the 1st century BC and 5th century AD. 5th century CE. Take okay. Earliest phase, 2nd century BC, visible in caves number 9 and 10. Headgear and other ornaments of the images in these paintings resemble the sculpture of Sachi and Bharat. Why? Because Sachi and Bharat also belong to the same period, around the same period. Second phase, paintings belongs to the 5th to 8th century CE. Specimen of these exemplary paintings of Vakataka period could be noticed in caves 1, 2, 16 and 17. Here, <coughs> the theme kaun si hogi? most common? Buddhism, right? So, Jataka stories are going to be represented. Incidents associated with the life of Buddha are going to be found. And contemporary events and social life is also going to find a place. Ceiling decoration invariably consists of decorative patterns, geometrical as well as floral also. Okay? Paintings were executed after an elaborate preparation of the rock surface. So, rock surface ko prepare kaise kiya jata tha? First step was to make chisel marks on the entire wall. After that, a thin plaster was applied. It was allowed to dry and uh, then uh, using glue, colors were applied to the uh, surface to the prepared surface, right? Chief binding material used here was glue. Paintings at Ajanta are therefore not true frescoes as they are painted with the aid of a binding agent, whereas in the fresco paintings are executed while lime wash is still wet with and thereby acts as an intrinsic binding agent. Okay? Now, what are the important features? Number one is Centrality. That means each painting is going to have a cent one subject as the central focus. These are Buddhist star to central focus. Amesha kiske upar hoga? The Buddha, right? And uh, main features so that attention is at once drawn to the most important person in each scene. The painters of Ajanta had realized the true glory of Buddha, the story of whose life was employed here by them as a motif to explain eternal pattern of human life. Second important characteristic was the adaptation of line. So, Ajanta art is a form of line art. Now, paintings may do ke arts ho sakte hai. One is line art, the other is lineless art. Right? A difference kya hai basic difference is mein? Lineless art may the outlines of each figure are not uh, outlined. Theke? So they are not, they, not present. As a result, pe how do you distinguish 
the different surfaces of a particular painting by the use of shadowing theek hai to toning use karte hain in order to show the uh, raised and depressed portions of a particular subject line art mein aisa karne ki zarurat hogi nahi hogi because each of the outlines is clearly defined and uh, ajanta is considered to be the basic template on which all indian paintings are modeled therefore indian paintings ko aap kis category mein rakhoge zyada tar ko line art mein ya lineless art mein line art mein art of line theek hai adaptation of line is the chief character of all the oriental paintings and one of the greatest achievements of the ajanta artists thirdly emotion and pathos are expressed by control turn and precise and the poise of the body and of the eloquent gestures of the hand so indian art is also extremely expressive in nature right now european art by contrast kis tarah ka dikhta hai emotions are not very clearly visible they are highly idealized paintings right these are highly humanistic paintings human emotions pe yahan par there is great degree of focus important pieces famous pieces kon kon se hain shaddhant jataka along the right wall of key number 10 belongs to the first century ce the painting of a dying princess in cave number 16 was painted in the early 5th century ce painting of bodhisattva padampani from cave 1 is one of the masterpieces of ajanta painting executed in the late 6th century see the scenes of mahajanak jataka in uh, cave number 1 are the best surviving examples of ajanta paintings belonging to the 6th and 7th century c to so, shadhang jatak jataka mahajanak jataka dying princess Pad- padmapani ye sab kahan pe milta hai aapko ajanta mein mil jata hai once again it is the only location in india where paintings from the 1st century bc and 5th century ad are can be found next important location elora caves now elora caves also located in no nahi nahi ajanta mein nahi islamic influence nahi dekhne ke liye milta you do get some christian influence in the caves at elephanta but no islamic influence right so islamic influence was in paintings was confined primarily to the royal palaces right so yahan pe nahi dekhne ke liye milta so it must be hinayana kon ajanta both hinayan as well as mahayan theek hai so in the early period belong to hinayan later period mein mahayan so early period mein buddha ko kaise represent kiya jayega through symbols not with a human figure later ह्यूमन फिगर में ह्यूमन फॉर्म में राइट वॉल पेंटिंग्स एट एलोरा और ऑफ ग्रेट ग्रेट इंपॉर्टेंस एंड सैंटिटी यहाँ पे कौन कौन से रिलीजन का इन्फ्लुएंस देखने के लिए मिलता है बुद्धिज्म जैनिज्म एज वेल एज हिंदुइज्म राइट अजंता केव सॉरी एलोरा केव कॉम्प्लेक्स कंसिस्ट ऑफ थर्टी थ्री केव्स आउट ऑफ विच सेवेंटीन आर एसोसिएटेड विद हिंदुइज्म 12 with buddhism and remaining 5 with jainism 4 with jainism theek okay? hai now when were they excavated between the 8th and 10th century ce is from living rocks patronized by rulers of which dynasty yes Uh, Rashtrakuta dynasty. Most impressive monument of this entire complex, Kailash Nath Cave Temple, right? And uh, on the panels of the Kailash Nath Cave, you are going to find several fragments of paintings on the ceiling of the different parts of this temple, and also on uh, the walls of some of the Jain temples in Ellora. composition of the paintings at elora is in rectangular panels with thick borders aapko ajanta mein koi borders milte hain no borders are shown but over here 
the artists have executed their paintings within thick black borders right now while ajanta has gives the sense of expansive space in elora what is the sense confined space okay the space in the sense of ajanta therefore does not exist at elora so far as the style is concerned elora painting is a departure from the classical norm of ajanta paintings as well most important characteristic features of elora paintings are sharp twist of the head painted angular bends of the arm concave curve of the closed limbs the sharp projected nose and long drawn open eyes generally these features are associated not with ancient classical art but with medieval art ancient classical art ka template that was set by ajanta there you are not going to find any jerky movement so head is not going to be bent sharply arms are going to be uh, bent gently right so you must remember that ek line humne padhi thi that uh, the poise of the human body was reflective of the general state of mind uh, in ajanta ye yahan pe nahi dekhne ke liye milta hai therefore it is perhaps a pro, pro, perhaps a product of the transitional period transition between ancient and medieval period right next we have bag caves bag caves kahan par hain madhya pradesh mein what are the themes over here buddhist much like ajanta right they correspond to paintings of ajanta in caves number 1 and 2 stylistically both belong to the same form but bag figures are more tightly modeled and are stronger in outline they are more earthy and human than those at ajanta and these were executed in tempera these paintings are materialistic rather than spiritualistic right then we have badami caves now these are brahmanical caves the earliest brahmanical caves known so far paintings known so far have been found from badami patronized by which rulers chalukyan rulers right the chalukya king mangalesha younger son of pulkeshin the first patronized the excavation of the badami caves most remarkable pieces over here shiva and parvati apart from uh, the hindu influence you also have jain influence in cave number 4 there is a mural dedicated to adinath tirthankara and depicts him relinquishing the world for attainment of knowledge right though the technique follows that of ajanta and bag the modeling is much more sensitive in texture and expression uh and outline is soft and elastic next we have the sita navasal cave temp, uh, cave paintings now these paintings where are they found in tamil nadu associated with which religion jainism now they enjoy the same norm and technique as that of ajanta the technique employed is known as fresco secco yaad hai na fresco secco kya hota hai acha that is painting is done on dry plaster contours of these paintings are firmly drawn dark on a light red background so light red background ke upar first of all first step is going to be to draw the outline of the figure so this is also like ajanta kind of line art art of line and the same aesthetic sense is also found on the ceiling of the veranda is painted a large decorative scene of great beauty a lotus pool with birds elephants buffaloes and a young man plucking flowers ha pandyas pandya rulers uh, vijayanagar murals now vijayanagar uh, paintings emerged from the 14th century onwards and early paintings are found at tiruparukkanam uh near tirucha tiruchirappalli right in uh, trichy in tamil nadu now in uh, hampi virupaksh temple is another site where such paintings are found virupaksh temple mein jo paintings mili hain wahan pe theme kya hai dynastic history and episodes from the epics ramayan and mahabharat one of the most important paintings found here is that of vidyaranya who was he the spiritual guru of the founders harihar and bukka right so he was the spiritual teacher of bukka raya the first being carried on a in a palanquin in a procession and the incarnations of vishnu 
Now, unique features of Vijayanagar art that the faces of the figures are shown in profile with large frontal eyes and the figures have narrow waist. Influenced by Vijayanagar art, we have Lepakshi art. Now, Lepakshi temple is located in Andhra Pradesh and is one of the most important uh, examples of Vijayanagar paintings. Characteristic features, earthly tones and the near complete absence of blue. In fact, none of the primary colors have been used in great detail, in great expanse. Okay? So, in fact, primary colors in general. Primary colors matlab? RBG, red, blue, green. These colors are very rarely seen. And instead, you find use of earthly tones. Right? Forms of the figure and details of their costume are outlined in black. The Lepakshi temple also has the finest specimens of mural paintings of the Vijayanagar kings. Right? For example, the boar hunt seen from the Lepakshi temple has become the uh, characteristic. So, it almost acts as a template for late medieval uh, royal portraits. Nayaka paintings also influenced by the same Vijayanagar art. Nayaka paintings belong to the 17th and 18th century and are seen in Thirupurukkanam. Uh, thiru, thiru, uh, pra, thiru Early paintings uh, depict scenes from life of Vardhaman Mahavir. Late phase of Na Nayaka paintings depict episodes from Mahabharat, Ramayana and from Krishna Leela as well. In the Shri Krishna temple at Chengam Arkad, there are 26 panels narrating the Ramayana which demonstrates the end phase of Nayaka paintings. Nayaka paintings were more or less an extension of the Vijayanagar style with minor regional modifications and incorporations. Right? So, kya dekhne ke liye milega? Figures with a frontal face and broad eyes, figures with a narrow waist. But over here, as compared to Vijayanagar style, the abdomen is also smaller. In uh, Vijayanagar, bulging ab abdomen was shown. Then we have Kerala murals. They evolved as uh, a result of the influence of uh, Na Nayaka and Vijayanagar styles in uh, confluence with Kerala sensibilities of local art. So, it was also influenced by local customs such as Kathakali. So, color scheme yaha pe kaisa hoga? It is going to be extremely bold and bright. So, you remember picture dekhaya tha kal Kathakali performers ka? So, very bright face mask, face uh, makeup they were wearing, right? So, they yaha pe human figures are represented in the three dimensions as well. Thematically too, paintings from Kerala stand apart. Most of the narrations were based on episodes from Hindu mythology which were popular in Kerala. Important palaces where uh, Kerala murals can be found. Dash Palace at Kochi, Kochi uh, Krishnapuram Palace at uh, Kayamkulam, etc. Then we have the Rang Mahal of Chamba Palace. Now, Chamba kaha par hai? Himachal Pradesh mein. These paintings belong to the Kangra school, a Pahadi school of painting. Now, they are considered to be the best examples of Pahadi murals. Uh, main theme kya hai? Love stories revolving around Lord Krishna. Then we come to the miniature paintings, right? Now, miniature paintings began in India as a form of book illustration. Earliest books written in India, religious or secular works, religious works right and therefore these miniature paintings began as devotional paintings found within manuscripts right so ye eastern india mein bhi dekhne ke liye milta hai western india mein bhi dekhne ke liye milta hai from the early medieval period onwards in eastern india they take the form of pala school of art now pala school of art influenced by which religion Buddhism, the Palas were famously patrons of Buddhism, Buddhism, right? Now, a similar kind of art was also seen in Western India, in the region of Gujarat and Rajasthan, known as Apabhramsa art. It has Jain influence. Right now, the Buddhist monasteries 
फाउंड विद इन दी पाला एम्पायर सच एज दो नालंदा उदांतपुरी विक्रमशिला एंड सोमापुरा वर ग्रेट सेंटर्स ऑफ बुद्धिस्ट लर्निंग एज वेल एज आर्ट राइट अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ मैन्यूस्क्रिप्ट वर रिटर्न ऑन पाम लीव रिलेटिंग टू बुद्धिस्ट थीम्स एंड इलेस्ट्रेटेड विद द इमेजेस ऑफ बुद्धिस्ट डेटीज एट दीज सेंटर्स विच ऑल्सो हैड वर्कशॉप फॉर द कास्टिंग ऑफ ब्रॉन्ज इमेजेस सो अ ग्रेट डिग्री वराइटी ऑफ आर्ट वॉज बींग जनरेटेड बाई दीज मोनेस्ट्रीज पाला पेंटिंग इज कैरेक्टराइज बाई सिनुअस लाइन्स एंड सबड्यू टोन्स ऑफ कलर तो यह ये सेम सेंस आपको कहाँ पे देखने के लिए मिला था इसके पहले सिनुअस लाइन्स एंड सबड्यू टोन्स ऑफ कलर एट अजंता तो स्टाइलिस्टिकली इट इज इंफ्लुएंस बाई द क्लासिकल स्टैंडर्ड सेट बाई अजंता आर्ट ठीक है इट इज अ नेचुरलिस्टिक स्टाइल विच रिजेंबल्स द आइडियल फॉर्म्स ऑफ कंटेम्प्रेरी ब्रॉन्ज एंड स्टोन कल्चर एंड रिफ्लेक्ट सम ऑफ द फीलिंग ऑफ द क्लासिकल आर्ट ऑफ अजंता now pala art came to a sudden end with the onset of islamic rule in north india right as all the monasteries which were the centers where this art was being generated they were destroyed surviving examples of pala illustrated manuscripts mostly belong to vijayanagar school of uh, sorry vajrayana school of buddhism this is an example of pala art on both sides of a palm leaf uh, page you are going to find some script and in the middle uh, painting right now painting ke characteristics kya honge it is always going to have a border red and yellow border centrality is going to be a focus then uh, line art can be easily seen and the colors used for depicting the subjects they are going to be subdued cool in nature right garish bold colors are not going to be used then we have the Mughal school of painting now Mughal school of painting witnessed constant evolution why due to the shifting tastes of the emperors right now mughal school of painting was a school of royal art patronized by the mughal emperors and with the shifting taste of the emperors the styles of mughal paintings also kept on changing the founder of the mughal empire babar now babar was a born artist but his love was not painting his artistic efforts were directed towards literature theek hai and therefore painting was neglected right now it was a tradition in all of the central asian ruling houses to have a well appointed library right these libraries were known as surat khanas so he also inherited a very good surat khana a very good library maintained it enlarged it and then passed it on Uh, although he himself was not a great patron of painting he did not discourage painting so he allowed his sons and important courtiers to patronize painters okay he did not discourage painting and while he was at kabul a very famous persian painter came and lived in his court for a short period kaun tha ye behzad a famous persian painter 
was briefly attached to his court. Therefore, from the very beginning, Mughal painting is going to be heavily influenced by which school of painting, which style of painting? Persian painting. Okay? So, he introduced Persian influence into Mughal painting. Since Babar was always more interested in literature, therefore, he wrote his own autobiography. Kya bolte hain usko? Tuzuke Babri. Or the Babar Nama. Written in which language? His mother tongue, kya? Chagatai Turkish. For which Babar invented his own script, his own calligraphic script. So that was his contribution to visual art. Kya? The creation of a new script. What was his new script known as? Khat A Babri. Okay? Which was a new calligraphic script introduced by Babar. And uh, this is the extent of his contribution to painting. Okay? Persian influence became visible under him. He did not patronize painting personally, but did not discourage it. He introduced a new style of calligraphic script known as Khat A Babri. Babar, who was followed by Humayun. Before Humayun could consolidate the Mughal Empire, he was defeated and driven out of India. Where did he go? He fled to Persia, right? Iran, right? Stayed in Iran for a lengthy period. Then first came and conquered Kabul by defeating his younger brother Kamran. And then in 1555, he defeated the uh, Suris to claim Delhi once again. He re-established his control over North India. Upon his return from uh, Persia, he invited two Persian scholars. So, he brought two Persian scholars. Kon Kon? Mir Abdus Samad and Mir Sayyid Ali. And uh, they painted a number of masterpieces during Humayu's reign, right? Now, are they going to rely upon Persian technique or are they going to use an entirely new and uh, foreign Indian technique? Persian technique. So, it was purely Persian in the beginning, okay? Babar did not have an opportunity to diversify his paintings. He died and was replaced by Akbar. Sorry, Humayu was replaced by Akbar. Akbar is considered to be the real founder of Mughal painting. It was under him that Mughal painting emerged as a synthesis of Persian, Indian and European styles. Okay? 
बिफोर दिस इट वॉज प्योरली पर्जियन सो इट वॉज अंडर अकबर दैट इंडियन एंड यूरोपियन सेंसिबिलिटीज ऑफ पेंटिंग बिकेम विजिबल विद इन मुगल आर्ट ठीक है ही वॉज ऑल्सो दी फर्स्ट मुगल एम्पर टू हैव अ डेडिकेटेड एटेलियर और तस्वीर खाना That is a picture gallery with a large army of royally patronized artists. So more than a hundred artists were employed by him, coming from Central Asia, Persia, and local indian artists as well right the essence of akbar's period's paintings was book illustrations executed either on cloth canvas or on paper within manuscripts illustrated manuscripts or albums were known as murakkas theek hai the cloth canvas paintings were also part of an album now akbar was not literate he had a learning disability and could not uh, read therefore he was uh, looking for ways in which he could uh, appreciate stories without hearing them without uh, reading them personally to kya karta tha ye he would uh, commission painters to paint the images from a particular story on one side of a canvas on the back side of the canvas he would have the uh, adjoining text written down he would sit in front of the painting and a narrator would sit at the back so jaise jaise naya tasveer taanga jayega the narrator is going to uh, read it aloud and he could appreciate it visually right aise a number of works were illustrated such as the dastane Amir Hamza the Changiz Nama the Razm Nama etc book illustrations include those of the Babar Nama and the अकबर नामा एटसेट्रा ठीक है इन अकबर एटलियर द वे इन विच पेंटिंग्स वर डन वॉज ऑल्सो क्वाइट यूनिक इंस्टेड ऑफ अ सिंगल पेंटर पेंटिंग एन एंटायर वर्क अकबर यूटिलाइज डिविजन ऑफ लेबर तो यहां पे क्या होगा डिफरेंट आर्टिस्ट हु हैड डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ एक्सपर्टीज आर गोइंग टू फिनिश डिफरेंट पोर्शन ऑफ अ सिंगल पीस रिजल्टिंग इन अ सिंगल पेंटिंग बीन पेंटेड बाई सेवरल सेवरल पेंटर्स टू टू थ्री पेंटर्स ठीक है नाउ अकबर पास ऑन हिज लव फॉर पेंटिंग टू हिज सन जहांगीर and under him mughal painting reached its peak however the emperor was less interested in book illustrations and more inter interested in portraiture theek okay? hai so the focus shifted 
towards portrait paintings subjects kon the the emperor himself empress royal ladies important nobles uh, famous saints painters themselves or some other artists theek hai to in sab ki portrait painting sab banne lag gayi another feature of jahangir's period was that the european influence became dominant why because of increasing contact with europe through merchants and traders the european monarchs also exchanged embassies with the moguls at this point of time right important characteristics of jahangir's paintings was their naturalism right so these appeared to be extremely natural in nature while being naturalistic they were also highly idealized they were also quite life like and emotive the human emotions of grief anger love joy etc can be easily read within the uh, expressions of the subjects then because of the greater european influence you are going to find that uh, three dimensionality had become the norm the technique of four shortening was used to convey the sense of distance light and shadow effect became more pronounced some artistic tools such as roaring clouds and uh, uh, child like angelic figures cherubs or cutis became common embellishments in mughal paintings from this point onwards further before this in the mughal paintings you would find that architectural monuments etc they were not drawn from a single front perspective rather they were drawn from a multi point perspective so all the sides of the monument would be shown now that was replaced by single point frontal perspective ठीक है आफ्टर जहांगीर केम शाहजहान राइट नाउ अच्छा जहांगीर के पीरियड के बारे में टू अदर इंपॉर्टेंट डिटेल्स दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ड्यूरिंग हिज पीरियड अ न्यू फॉर्म ऑफ आर्ट नोन एज Ashia art became quite prominent, right? Ashia किस को बोलते हैं The borders of the portrait paintings, right? So the borders became heavily ornamented. उनके ऊपर tapestries, flowers, vines, arabesque pattern used to be executed in great detail. So almost as much attention was given to the borders as was given to the main portrait itself during this period. so hashi art began during the period of jahangir a new technique also emerged known as neem kalam or half pen technique now the outlines of the various figures would be drawn in ink and then after that 
extremely you can say diluted uh, colors would be applied in tonal washes right so isko kya bolte hai half pen technique or neem kalam right all both of them emerge during jahangir's period next we have shah jahan's paintings now shah jahan was more interested in which form of art architecture therefore paintings received increasingly lesser and lesser attention and patronage resulting in a gradual decline further the purpose of the paintings was also transformed jahangir seemed to take real joy out of painting theek okay? hai however for shah jahan painting was simply a medium to showcase the wealth power and splendor of the mughal emperor therefore the life like emotive quality of jahangir's period became subdued during shah jahan's time and there was greater attention on ornamentation capturing the pomp show and power of the mughal emperors instead of using a pale or you can say a subdued color palette now extremely bold colors are going to be used such as gold silver peacock blue indigo blue etc right so these colors would be used so the paintings became ornamental rigid and lifeless okay further before this the mughal artists used to make their sketches with charcoal sticks right but uh, charcoal was now going out of fashion and shah jahan discouraged its use and promoted the use of pencils so pencil sketchings overpowered charcoal sketching during this period theek okay. hai next ruler aurangzeb right now uh, aurangzeb due to several reasons actively discouraged painting what did he say why should painting not be continued kya bola isne kya excuse diya because it was un-islamic and aurangzeb wanted to project himself as a great champion of islam theek okay? hai so due to his religious bias he claimed that he was discouraging painting but what was the reality by the time of aurangzeb the mughal empire was facing a financial crisis and it was no longer feasible for aurangzeb to sustain the same kind of patronage that was being given to painters so financial crisis also played an important role in his withdrawal of royal patronage what did he do he shut down the mughal tasveer khana disbanded all the painters destroyed many of the important works that had already been created plastered and painted over many of the murals which existed within the mughal palaces theek okay? hai so mughal painting came to a sudden decline and what happened to all of the painters at the mughal court they left the mughal courts and moved to the regional courts right usually of the rajputs and this gave birth to rajput paintings now rajput paintings flourished 
both in the lowland regions and in the highland regions, in the hilly regions. Those in the lowland regions, they are known as Rajasthani paintings. Those in the hilly regions, they are known as Pahadi paintings. Important schools of Rajasthani art. Kaun kaun se? Malwa school. Mewar school. The Kota Bundi school. The Kishangar school. Etc. और भी हैं इसमें ठीक है पहाड़ी स्कूल के इंपॉर्टेंट पहाड़ी पेंटिंग्स के इंपॉर्टेंट स्कूल्स कांगरा स्कूल गुलर स्कूल बशोली स्कूल एंड दी कुल्लू मंडी स्कूल Right now, are Rajput paintings going to have any Mughal influence or not? Yes, because it is carried on by the same painters who once used to inhabit the Mughal court. Tick. But are the themes going to be the same as the ones in the Mughal court? No. The Rajput rulers were trying to deliberately distance themselves from the Mughals at this point of time. They were trying to create a new cultural image. And the Rajput paintings, uh, you can say, reflected this particular sensibility. So, what are the main themes that are going to be found? Some secular themes such as royal portraits, hunting scenes, pleasure scenes or love making scenes. Apart from some religious scenes, especially Krishna Bhakti and the Ragmala series, right? Ragmala series kya hota hai? where the different ragas are anthropomorphized, a uh, particular time is assigned to each raga, a particular season is assigned to each raga and they are drawn. Male and female ragas are treated as heroes and heroines, nayak, nayak and nayakas, right? So, these are the themes which emerged. Now, Rajput painting ka jo style hai, that is also distinct from the Mughal style paintings. What are you going to find? The use of bold colors. The paintings are going to be highly stylized. Not naturalistic. Thirdly, many of these paintings are going to be narrative paintings, especially the Religious paintings. The uh, lines of the paintings, they are also going to be drawn. So, the execution as well as the color palette is going to be bold. Okay. So, these are the features. Now, Malwa paintings ke unique features kya hai? That apart from Mughal influence, it also shows a distinct Deccani influence. Okay. Because of its geographical proximity to the Deccan region. The color scheme used is 
बोल्ड बट द एग्जीक्यूशन इज क्वाइट सटल इन नेचर मेवार पेंटिंग्स मेवार वॉज लॉक्ड इन अ स्ट्रगल फॉर सर्वाइवल अगेंस्ट दी मुगल्स सो इज एनी मुगल इन्फ्लुएंस गोइंग टू बी विजिबल नो सो इट वॉज नोन फॉर इट्स डिस्टिंक्शन From Mughal paintings, Mewar paintings का जो theme है what is that going to be? Primarily hunting scenes, royal hunting scenes. And जो background का landscape है वो कहां का होगा मेवाड़ी jungles का Aravali forests का right? A unique feature of Mewar paintings is that in the sky you always will will have a red ribbon that is present, uh, indicating either the time of dawn or dusk. Okay. So these are the characteristics of the Mewar style. Kota Bundi style, also known as the Hadoti style. These are influenced primarily by the folk tradition of local Rajput paintings. inspired by folk paintings naturalistic or stylized highly stylized color scheme bold background plain dark color and theme primarily religious clear hai the kishangarh school was primarily focused upon portraiture but the sensibilities were very different from mughal portraiture mughal portraiture mein aapko european and persian influence dekhne ke liye milta hai that means figures are going to be three dimensional here the figures were two dimensional in mughal paintings the figures are shown in three quarter moon phase that means three fourths of the face is visible yahan pe kya dekhne ke liye milega साइड प्रोफाइल देखने के लिए मिलेगा इन मुगल पोर्ट्रेचर दी सब्जेक्ट्स आर ट्रीटेड नेचुरलिस्टिकली हियर दे आर हाईली स्टाइलाइज फॉर एग्जांपल द नोज द चिन लिप्स आर गोइंग टू बी मेड एक्सट्रीमली शार्प द आईज आर गोइंग टू मेड एक्सट्रीमली लॉन्ग एंड करविंग द हेयर इज गोइंग टू बी गिवेन सरपेंटाइन लॉक्स the waist is going to be pinched extremely slender okay highly stylized in nature important example of kishangarh's paintings bani thani
ऑल्सो नोन एज दी मोनालिजा ऑफ इंडिया ठीक है तो ये हो गए एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ राजस्थानी पेंटिंग्स सेकेंड कैटेगरी पहाड़ी पेंटिंग्स दे फ्लरिश इन द स्मॉल राजपूत हिल किंगडम्स विच वर कंटेम्प्रेरी ऑफ द मुगल्स कांगड़ा स्कूल इन जम्मू फेमस फॉर पोर्ट्रेचर हेवली इंफ्लुएंस बाय मुगल स्टाइल देयर फोर यूज ऑफ सॉफ्ट कलर्स एंड रियलिज्म राइट गोलर स्कूल Patronized by Raja Sarsan Sansar Chand of Jasrota, in fact, his portrait became the template for the portraits of other uh, rulers, not only in Gular but in the Basholi school as well. This school was uh, started by the master painter Nansok. Apart from portraits. we also find a number of court scenes as well as royal hunts right basholi school can be seen as a continuation of the gular school in fact it was the family members of nansok who went to basholi and received patronage from the local rulers and therefore all the uh, important elements of uh, the gular school such as portraiture court scenes and royal hunts with the use of soft colors is going to be visible even in basholi theek hai to basholi mein bhi same elements aapko dekhne ke liye milenge then we have the kullu mandi school Kullu Mandi school was a, a form of folk art, not palace art. ठीक है? So is any master professional painter going to be associated with this? No. Themes क्या होंगे? Religious theme and scenes from common life right so these are going to be visible the paintings are also going to lack the naturalistic beauty of the royal art they are going to be ethnic in their execution so bold colors honge crude execution hoga this is going to be seen over here so you can simply write ethnic aesthetic sense is visible in the kullu mandi school of paintings theek hai so these are the important details that you need to know about the mughal and post mughal schools now at the time that the mughal style of painting was flourishing in the deccan also painting was flourishing in the deccani sultanates of ahmednagar bijapur and golconda between the 16th and 17th centuries deccani schools ka main characteristic kya hai that it is a blend of persian and south indian art where was the persian influence coming from 
due to the influx of a number of new nobles artists and scholars from central asia and persia and south indian influence local tha right so that was visible ahmednagar earliest examples of ahmednagar painting are written in praise of hussain nizam shah the first of ahmednagar and his queen this manuscript is known as tarif e hussain shahi and assigned to a period 1565 to 1569 theek okay? hai so it is an illustrated work women in choli bodies that is the bodies and long pigtails braided and ending in a tassel are the uh, northern costume right so jaise north india ka costume tha waise in paintings mein aapko costume dekhne ke liye milta hai but the long scarf passing around the body is in the southern fashion so choli etc the hair style wo north indian fashion mein hai but this uh, head covering and the scarf that is worn worn around the neck that is south indian the colors used in the painting being rich and brilliant are different from those used in the northern paintings another fine example of the ahmednagar painting is hindola rag second school deccan paintings ka bijapur school patronized by ali adil shah the first and his successor ibrahim shah the second features of these paintings the ladies appearing in illustrations are tall and slender and were wearing south indian dress theek hai the color scheme is rich the uh, landscape includes palm trees animals and men and women who all belong to the deccani tradition so yahan pe south indian influence once again becomes visible the profuse use of gold color some flowering plants and arabesque on the top of the throne are derived from the persian tradition to persian tradition se kya milta hai the use of gold uh, flowering plants plants and uh, the use of arabesque then we have the golconda school of paintings the earliest paintings identified as golconda work are a group of five charming paintings painted during the reign of mohammad quli qutub shah the uh, qutub shah they show dancing girls entertaining the company in which a king is in the center king is wearing white clothes he has a sword at his side one of the miniatures illustrated shows the king in his court watching the watching a dance performance he wears a white muslin cloth with embroidered vertical band and a typical costume associated with golconda court gold color has been lavishly used in painting in the architecture costume jewelry vessels etc so once again extensive use of gold color is present theek okay? hai so these are your various schools of miniature art and now coming to some traditional paintings uh traditional paintings may be categorized as folk paintings or tribal paintings folk paintings executed by village people tribal paintings executed by tribal people right folk art is the art created by the rural people for rural people which are concentrated around different kinds of ritual traditions and festivals uh tribal art generally reflects the cre- creative energy found in tribal areas that acts as an undercurrent of craftsmanship of the tribal people ab ye batao traditional art is it going to follow a unique standard nahi so in every region for every tribe they are all going to have their own uh, standard traditions and techniques right the treatment of each type of painting therefore vastly differs in different parts of india now some paintings have been given gi tag geographical indication tag kon kon se hain tanjor paintings native to tamil nadu madhubani paintings native to bihar patichitra odisha kalamkari andhra pradesh cherial paintings telangana kangra painting himachal and varli maharashtra right let us look at some of these traditional art forms patichitra it is a narrative scroll scroll painting scroll kya hota hai a long piece of cloth which may be folded into a uh, roll uh, either cloth or paper theek hai 
it is native to odisha right this uh, special painting on cloth is a special form of a uh, special art form of odisha pat chitra can be dated back to the 5th century bc pat indicates clothing and chitra means painting so the name of the scroll is pata and chitra is painting technique kya hai to make the canvas first of all painters used fine gauze like cloth which they fortify with tamarind paste chalk powder and gum so pehle kya banate hain they make the canvas after drying the canvas pat chitra painters draw the most intricate designs on it and color it with natural dyes what are the themes local religious themes such as those of lord jagannath and epics such as ramayana and mahabharat developed by locals of uh, ragurajpur puri sonpur etc it became widespread with the construction of the great temples at puri konark and bhubneshwar next example madhubani paintings native to bihar also known as mithila painting so mithila region of bihar mein ye kaun karta hai men ya women women wear traditionally on the walls of their homes usually the uh, mud walls were freshly plastered and while they were still wet the painting was done now it is done on other surfaces as well paper pe canvas pe sab jagah pe hone lag gaya right gradually paintings became parts of occasions and celebrations like marriage and finally the art is now famous globally traditional base of freshly plastered mud wall of huts has now been replaced by cloth handmade paper and canvas themes kya hai hindu deities such as krishna rama lakshmi shiva durga and saraswati natural themes that are used include sun moon and religious plants like tulsi one can also find paintings based on scenes from the royal courts and social events like weddings how is it made uh, using a brush made of cotton which is wrapped around a bamboo stick colors are all obtained from natural sources for example black color from soot and cow dung uh, yellow from mixing of turmeric with banyan leaves uh, and uh, milk banyan leaf milk uh, blue from indigo green from leaves of wood apple tree uh, leaves of the wood of apple tree leaves of the wood apple tree uh white from rice powder and orange from palash flowers there is no shading to so shading nahi hota in the application of colors double line is drawn for outlines and between those outlines the gap that is left that is filled either by cross or straight tiny lines to so, hatching karte hain ya fir straight lines se then we have alpana it is a form of floor art rangoli hota hai kahan ka bengal ka practice by women on religious uh, occasions usually it is uh, meant to ward off evil and bring good luck theek hai how is the painting made using a small piece of cloth drenched in a blend uh, blend of powdered rice and color theek hai so done for driving out evil spirits done on the floor kollam kollam is another form of rangoli where kerala and tamil nadu right done by men or women once again women right female members of the house usually draw kollam designs in front of their homes with the help of rice powder limestone and brick powder are used on special occasions it is also regarded as a form of painted picture a uh, painted prayer in south india then we have gond painting characterized by a sense of belonging with nature the gondi tribe in maharashtra madhya pradesh created these bold vibrantly colored paintings depicting mainly flora and fauna colors are obtained from local sources if you look closely it is made up of a series of dots and lines to koi ek flowing line nahi hota hai today these styles are imitated with acrylic paints as well earlier they were made by using traditional dyes now acrylic paints also cherial scrolls belonging to telangana right this is a uh, practice by the nakashi family only so it is being kept alive by a single family tradition of long scrolls and kalamkari art have influenced cherial scrolls a much more stylized version of nakashi art now these scrolls are 40 to 45 feet long and is pe themes kon kon si represent hoti hain 
पुरान एंड एपिक थीम्स दे आर ऑल्सो इंफ्लुएंस बाय नक्काशी आर्ट एंड कलमकारी आर्ट नाउ ट्रेडिशनली दीज वर दी विजुअल अकम्पनीमेंट एज सेंट्स वॉन्डर्ड अराउंड द रीजन सिंगिंग और नैरेटिंग दी एपिक्स so whatever they were singing or narrating background may this scroll would be opened up and set up today uh, now they resemble modern day comic panels with about 50 scenes on each scroll and they use primary colors and a vivid imagination a stark contrast from the traditional rigor of tanjore or mysore paintings next we have varli paintings they are considered to be one of the oldest art forms oldest paintings in india which is still are continuing varli tribes from western ghats practice it kahan ka hai ye maharashtra ka now use of geometric uh, figures is a, an essential feature of this painting humans ko kaise dikhate hain ek circle aur do triangle theek hai aise humans ko dikhayenge so use of circles triangles squares to form numerous shapes and depict daily life act daily life activities like fishing hunting festivals dance etc are shown what sets it apart is the human shape uh, is the human shape a circle and two triangles all paintings are done on a red ochre or dark background while shapes are white in color theek okay? hai next we have kalamkari the word kalamkari is a synthesis of two words kalam means pen and kari means work so it is done by pen kahan ka hai ye andhra pradesh ka two forms of kalamkari shri hastakali kalamkari and masuli patnam kalamkari theek hai shri hastakali ka jo kalamkari hai that has hindu influences it is linked to the temple culture to yahan pe themes kya honge hindu gods and goddesses their stories and uh, masuli patnam ka kalamkari it is linked to the royal muslim rulers of that region of golconda so yahan pe aapko hindu themes milenge milenge but very infrequent primarily uh, royal scenes secular themes are going to be visible right now outlines and main features are made by hand carved blocks while the finer details are later done using pen so jo outline hai that is not painted with a pen rather a uh, prepared block is dipped into ink and isko upar simply isko stamp kar diya jata hai right and then the details are filled filled in uh, inside that now next we come to tanjore paintings tanjore paintings flourished when nahi not cholas under the nayakas 18th or 19th century nayakas who followed the vijayanagar empire theek hai now it was an offshoot therefore of the vijayanagar school and is known for vibrant colors opulent surface and immense use of gold foils it was patronized by the nayakas of tanjore the uh, tanjore paintings locally inko kis naam se jana jata hai palagai padam why because they are made on wooden planks palagai ka matlab tamil mein hota hai a plank of wood and padam is picture so a picture made on a wooden plank palgai padam tanjor painting theek hai unique characteristics is the use of semi precious stones glass and gold right usually kaun si theme hoti hai isme religious theme right usually hindu gods ke portraits hote hain so a portrait of rama portrait of uh, krishna especially bala krishna child krishna is going to be shown and the portraits are going to be centered with a conical golden crown on top of the head of the main figure theek okay? hai so these are some of the details then we have kalighat paintings they were executed by the patwas around the kalighats patwas kaun the kaun the those who used to paint on the pats pats were scrolls right so these are also cloth scroll paintings they became popular in the late 19th early 20th centuries jab yahan pe pilgrimage tourism badhne laga right what these parts started to do was they started to sell these uh, their works cheaply thus they became popular across india at least across bengal theek okay? hai now these are kalighat painting why named kalighat because this art form emerged around the kalighat temple 
थीम क्या है रिलीजियस बट ऑल्सो डेली लाइफ देन वी हैव दी पतिकार पेंटिंग कहां का झारखंड बट इट ऑल्सो हैज अ डीप बेंगोली इंफ्लुएंस राइट दीज आर स्क्रोल पेंटिंग फ्रॉम झारखंड इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एंशियंट स्कूल ऑफ पेंटिंग इन इंडिया एंड इट इज प्रैक्टिस बाई दी ट्राइब ट्राइबल पीपल ऑफ झारखंड पतिकार पेंटिंग्स में बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ वेरिएबल ऑफ द पथ पेंटिंग्स कल्चरल हेरिटेज ऑफ दिस पेंटिंग एज एसोसिएशन विद द गॉडसेज इन द बेंगोली हाउस होल्ड लाइक माँ मनसा राइट झारखंड एंड वेस्ट बंगाल अगल बगल में है द ट्राइब्स ऑफ झारखंड हैव ऑल्सो असिमिलेटेड सम ऑफ द कल्चरल ट्रेड्स ऑफ द सेटल्ड कम्युनिटीज इन वेस्ट बंगाल इंक्लूडिंग देयर गॉड्स एंड गॉडेसेज सच एज द गॉडेस माँ मनसा नाव द पतिकार पेंटिंग्स ऑफ झारखंड हैव लिंक्स विद सोशो रिलीजियस कस्टम्स ऑफ होल्डिंग यज्ञाज एंड गिविंग आर्म्स एज वेल स्क्रोल पेंटिंग ऑल्सो मेरज द बेंगोली एंड झारखंडी डेली लाइफ paintings have common subject what happens to humans post death right unfortunately the art form is in decline then we have the cover and sohari paintings ye ye kahan pe practice kiye jate hain bihar jharkhand east up mein bhi right now uh, they are paintings from jharkhand are delicate and beautiful but the art form faces the threat of extinction these paintings may be religious or secular but are relevant to a women's world so they are painted by women exclusively and more specifically married women only theek hai to keval married women inko karti hain now painting is practiced exclusively by married women during weddings and at harvest time now cover painting during wedding and sohari painting during harvest time theek hai then we have thanka paintings kya hote hain ye thanka paintings बुद्धिस्ट क्लॉथ स्क्रोल पेंटिंग्स ऑफ सिक्किम एंड तिबेट ठीक है तीन अलग अलग टाइप्स के होते हैं ये थंका पेंटिंग्स वन ऑफ देम डिपिक्ट द लाइफ ऑफ द बुद्धा दट इज हिज बर्थ हिज डिसमेंट विद लाइफ हिज सर्च फॉर एनलाइटेनमेंट एंड हिज अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ लाइफ सेकेंड इज मोर एब्सट्रैक्ट रिप्रेजेंटिंग बुद्धिस्ट बिलीव अबाउट लाइफ एंड डेथ and third type consists of paintings that are often used as a tool for meditation or as offering to the deities it is usually done against a white background and colors used in the paintings have special significance white symbolizes serenity gold birth or life red intensity of passion as well as hatred black anger and yellow for compassion while green for consciousness next we have the pad paintings kahan ke rajasthan ke it is a form of religious scroll painting on extremely large scrolls right so 30 to 45 feet long scrolls hote hain and depicting the stories surrounding folk deities folk gods and goddesses such as babu ji or dev narayan vegetable colors and a running narrative of the lives and heroic deeds of deities characterizes these paintings apart from this epic tradition is also represented ramayan mahabharat puran geet govinda etc apart from that daily life of the local people apart from that birds and animal figures can also be found now uh, village artisans use organic or natural colors which are easily available lamp soot leaves of different trees flowers are natural sources of these colors tamarind seeds and fruits are used for uh, fruits are used for the purpose of banding the colors and line remains the basic element of these paintings they use finger as a brush so brush nahi use karte hain they simply use finger so these are forms of scroll paintings done with fingers theek hai acha so what are the types of questions that you should look out for एक तो इंटरकनेक्टिंग द डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ पेंटिंग विद द रीजन्स ठीक है सेकेंड रिलीजियस इन्फ्लुएंस कौन से रिलीजन का है थर्ड टाइम पीरियड और रॉयल लिनियज हु पेट्रनाइज दिम ठीक है सो यहां से क्वेश्चन आ सकता है देन यू मस्ट फोकस अपॉन यूनिक फीचर्स ऑफ दीज पेंटिंग्स 
तो अगर कोई पेंटिंग स्क्रोल पेंटिंग है या फिर कैनवस पे किया जा रहा है या वुड पे किया जा रहा है इफ इट इज डन डन फ्री हैंड इफ द आउटलाइन इज मेड ऑफ इज डन बाय ब्लॉक पेंटिंग तो इन सारी चीजों पे आपको फोकस करना चाहिए थर्डली कलर स्कीम इफ इन अ पर्टिकुलर पेंटिंग सम कलर्स आर नॉट यूज स्पेशली तो उस पर आपको स्पेशल अटेंशन देना चाहिए राइट right? कि अगर कोई कलर नहीं यूज हो रहा है fourthly if some special materials are used for making paintings yani ki glass use ho raha hai gold foil use ho raha hai or if at the time of preparing the canvas some arabic gum zinc oxide etc jaise mysore painting mein use hota hai waise use ho raha hai so that you should be careful about theek hai fifthly uh, you may be asked about uh, uh, इंडिविजुअल स्पेसिमें फॉर एग्जाम्पल बनी ठनी से क्वेश्चन आ सकता है पदम पनी के ऊपर क्वेश्चन आ सकता है जो कि आए भी हुए हैं सो यू शुड लुक आउट फॉर दीज डिटेल्स राइट सो क्वेश्चन अगर आते हैं इस टॉपिक से तो इन एरिया से आएंगे ना ये हमने इतनी जल्दी और इतनी तेजी से इसीलिए किया है क्योंकि आ, हमको इसमें बहुत ज्यादा टाइम देना नहीं है दीज आर द काइंड ऑफ फैक्चुअल डिटेल्स विच वी मस्ट लर्न फ्रॉम दीज थिंग्स ठीक है All right, so I'm ending the class right now. आप लोगों का एक नया लेक्चर भी शुरू होने वाला है सो इट इज बेस्ट दैट यू गो एंड अटेंड दैट ठीक है चलिए थैंक यू फॉर योर टाइम आई सी यू इन दी नेक्स्ट क्लास नेक्स्ट क्लास